Hey friends, I uh, am really glad to see you this, uh, this fine evening. We will wait for a couple seconds here to let people start logging in. Um, you may notice that I am in a different location right now. I am back at home. I am back in the Twin Cities and it's really glad. Uh, I'm glad to be able to say hello to you from a geographic location that's uh, actually near you. I've been in Denver for quite a while, as some of you probably knew. So I'm going to be bringing this devotion to you from our fair state of Minnesota. Um, during this time of social distancing and stay-at-home orders, I've been thinking a lot about family. And I've been thinking about my parents, uh, who have been, you know, doing a good job of staying, staying uh, away from other people and keeping themselves safe. That makes me feel happy. Uh, I've been thinking about you, my River Heights Vineyard Church family. I've been thinking about my brother and his family, who live up in Stillwater. Um, I've also been experiencing family with the Morgan family in Denver, who basically allowed me to be part of their family for uh, the, the last couple of weeks while we were doing self-quarantine together. So I got to do the whole thing, you know, taking turns, uh, watching kids and things like that. They've got a, uh, it's Annabeth and it's Kyle, and then they have a four-year-old daughter and she's awesome and super extroverted and in the phase of not liking anything and kind of, um, you know, being a little bit obstinate because she's going to be a powerful leader um, at some point in her life. But right now she's just, you know, being a little bit difficult, kind of like a teenager. Um, and uh, they've also got a, a son who is one and a half. So Annabeth, we could be praying for Annabeth and I'll pray right now. God, please be with Annabeth as Kyle is... Uh, is uh, serving people in the hospital and Annabeth is at home uh, taking care of those uh, two young kids and juggling things. Lord, give her everything that she needs. Uh, bless her in Jesus' name. Now, all this leads me to get to what I, what I wanted to share about for our devotional time today. Uh, God makes family in different ways. We have our earthly family, that we're born into, for better or for worse, and I've been very blessed to be born into mine, but I also know that a lot of us have been born into families or have, or have you know, in our own brokenness have created situations in our families uh, that have been a lot less than optimal. Um, so we have friction in our family systems, even the best of them, even the best of them. And I just want to encourage us, first of all, that Jesus had friction in his earthly family. There's a, there's a, passage in Mark chapter 3, 31 through 35, and I'm just going to read it to you. Uh, then Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him. They stood outside and sent word for him to come out and talk with them. Jesus was teaching at this point. This is early in his ministry. There was a crowd sitting around Jesus, and someone said, your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. And Jesus replied, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he looked around him, at those around him, and he said, look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. That is super intense. So, um, you know, Jesus' own family at one point, his earthly family thought, and it even said earlier in that, in that chapter that they had thought that he'd gone mad, that he'd gone crazy, that they needed to take him home. And so Jesus at this point is saying, these people, this this family of people that, uh, are doing the Lord's work together with me. These are my family. So the good news in Jesus' situation is that it seems like over time his family really came around and uh, and his earthly family uh, combined with his spiritual family. And that's what I want to talk about next. Um, and what I'd like us to do is think, be thinking about our earthly family, our spiritual family, and then I'm going to give us some time to think about what God might want to do today with us in those two. So number one, our earthly families. We've looked at those a little bit. And our spiritual family is something that we join or are welcomed into. Uh, sometimes that feels like it's for better or for worse too, right? Uh, sometimes we have friction in our church family, correct? 
Now, the good news is a time like this it probably gives us a little bit of breathing room and we say, wow, I really miss these people, right? Isn't it cool how, how that can uh, change our, our view of things um, a little bit? Even if we've been struggling with people a little bit, uh, being separated, that absence can, can make the heart grow fonder. Um, uh, I missed you a week, you know, in the first week of, of not being able to be together and I certainly miss you more and more and more as we go. So I'm glad for these times, these devotional times online. Jesus also had friction in his spiritual family, the family that God was uh, creating around him. Earlier in that same chapter in Mark 3, when it, 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 there was the uh, selecting of the disciples and it lists them all, and of course the last one listed is Judas, and it says who betrayed him, right? So um, something intense like that was happening in, in Jesus' Um, you know, family that was being formed around him. Uh, and we all know that the disciples fought with each other and they didn't understand Jesus. And, um, you know, they, they all left him at the end. Uh, but that is not the end of the story. And that's just what I want to focus on today. I want to look at Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. And it's so great to see all your, all your names scrolling through here and saying hi. Hi. It's so good. So good to be together. Uh, Ephesians 1, 3 through 11. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered us, he has showered his kindness on us, uh, along with all wisdom and understanding. Just take a moment and think about that. Uh, he has showered his kindness on us, God's kindness, even now, whether we're feeling it or not, and my hope is that we would feel that kindness is being showered upon us, uh, and grace, um, and and forgiveness, and wisdom and understanding. Maybe maybe we're in need of God's wisdom and understanding right now uh, and some things. I know that I'm feeling that way in some things in my life. This is so encouraging to me. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. This is it right here. He's going to outline, uh, outline it for us. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Receive the encouragement of the Lord this morning, uh, this evening, sorry. Um, that is something that can just really change how I'm even looking at my day. I don't know about you. Um, at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, and we are united with Christ even right now. Isn't that cool? We have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance. He chose you and me in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. So whatever's going on right now, isn't it comforting to think about God has a plan uh, that he's put into place and that he has what it takes to work everything out uh, for the completion of that plan. And so God is creating and has created and is growing a family that includes you and includes me. And I think that that gives us an opportunity to change how we look at our relationships that we're dealing with right today. And so I want to make a little bit of space uh, as we're nearing the end of this time for us to think about our earthly families uh, and our spiritual families. Uh, God might have something to say to you regarding one of those or both, okay? So, just take a moment, and I want you to picture your earthly family right now, and I'm going to do that too. And I'm going to pray a prayer to just ask God to, to do some things for us in that context. So, picture your family. Know that the Lord is with you, whether your family situation is going smoothly, it's full of friction, 
um, maybe is completely shattered and broken, know that the Lord is with you, beside you, looking, uh, looking at your family situation with you. And I'm going to lead us in a prayer. Jesus, thank you for dying and sacrificing to make it possible for us to have a spiritual family, to be part of your family. And Father God, thank you that you call us sons and daughters, that it was your plan to make that be the case, that it makes you happy to have us be in your family with you. And Holy Spirit, thank you that you are the power and the provision that allows us to change and see things go differently and to love people where we weren't able to love them before. So it's in that power, Spirit, that I ask that you would um, show us how and where to bless the people in our earthly family. Is there somebody in our earthly family uh, right now that you'd like to, uh, to bless and love on through us. And what would that look like for, for us, God? Will you talk to us about that? It might be something really simple. It might be sharing a kind word. It might be an apology. It might be sharing your heart with somebody in a way that you haven't had a chance to do that. Um, maybe there's a grace in the fact that we're all kind of cooped up together. Maybe there's an opportunity for you to have a conversation and share something of yourself with somebody in your earthly family. And now I'm going to invite us to turn our focus and our attention to our spiritual family. Um, you know, for me, that's River Heights Vineyard, of course. Um, I've also been experiencing being part of the larger vineyard family, you know, being in, uh, in Denver with the Mile High Vineyard people. So uh, I'm totally aware that this spiritual family can take on all kinds of forms. Um, but whatever your spiritual family is, uh, I just encourage you to just think about and hold your spiritual family in your heart right now. I think it's great that I can even be picturing some of your faces that are uh, that are logged in here and are um, and are streaming this right now. And I bet you I'm picturing the faces of some people who are going to be watching this a little bit later. And we're going to do the same kind of prayer as you think about your spiritual family. Jesus, thank you that you're willing to sacrifice to make it possible for us to be family with you. And Father God, thank you that it was your plan that we would be invited into your family. Thank you that you love us and that it makes you happy that we're part of your family. And Holy Spirit, again we ask, that as the one who is the power um, and, uh, and the love within us to actually see things change, be made different, to have courage where there wasn't any courage. Um, Holy Spirit, would you fill us and would you uh, inform us like who, who might you want to love on uh, today, tomorrow, this week? Who might you want to love on through us in your uh, in this spiritual family that you've placed us in. Now, if you're hearing something, um, I would encourage you to just jot that down and, and, and say, Lord, you know, with your help, I'm going to do that. I'm going to reach out to this person in my earthly family. Or, Lord, I'm going to reach out to this person in my spiritual family. And, then, you know, in the current context, that might be the form of, a, you know, a call, a uh, video chat, a, uh, an email, a text. Um, if you're in the same house with somebody, um, it could be that even as we've prayed this, maybe you're not hearing something right now, but I think that if we're being open, 
we might actually see an opportunity uh, and, and, and the Lord might speak to us in the moment saying, oh, here's your opportunity to love on somebody. Here's, here is the provision of family that I want to share with somebody else through you. Okay? Now, I'd love to hear if you want to, you know, send me a message or something. Uh, if you try this out, I'd love to know what kind of things are happening. Uh, that would really bless my heart. And I want to leave you with a blessing uh, this evening. Uh, I love that Pete's been using this often, and my dad often did as I was growing up in church. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Hmm, I love that. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Today, overnight, tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, we're going to be hearing from Jeff. He's going to be sharing our devotion. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be at 10 a.m. Love you, family. Um, and uh, let's just keep on connecting online as much as we can, okay? I'll catch you later.